In this video, I'm going to talk about something shocking, the electricity for your house. I'm Jendi from MomPrepares.com. The electricity comes through the wires to the service entrance of your house. There's an electric meter on the outside of your house that measures the amount you use so the company can bill you for it. The service panel is inside your house and is usually close to the area where the outside meter is. It's the main distribution center for the electricity in your house. At the top is the main breaker that controls all of the electricity and if there's a time when you don't know which one to switch and you need to turn off the electricity, the main breaker will shut down everything in your house. After the main switch, the electricity is divided up into circuits that go to different areas of your house. If your service panel was put in before 1965, you could actually have fuses. If a fuse blows, it has to be replaced. Make sure that you put in the same exact amperage fuse as the one that you took out. Putting in a higher amperage fuse is very dangerous. Most homes these days have circuit breakers. Inside the circuit breaker is a metal strip that heats and bends as the electricity passes through it. If you overload the circuit with too many appliances, the metal strip bends too much and trips the circuit breaker. That stops the electricity to that area. It's a safety feature and it can prevent fires. You can tell which circuit is tripped because it will not be in line with the others. This one on ours is tripped. To reset the circuit breaker, make sure the appliances in that area are unplugged. Then push the breaker the whole way to the off in case it got stuck in the middle and then push it over to the on position and the electricity should be back in that circuit area. It's very helpful to label your circuit breaker so you know at a glance which circuit affects which area of your house. In order to do that, first you want to unplug any appliances that will be affected by power surges like computers. You also want to have any major appliances turned off like dryers, dishwashers, washers, things like that. Then it's very good to have a helper with the cell phone or walkie-talkie that can communicate with you wherever the service panel is unless you prefer yelling at the top of your lungs. You have your helper go to the area that you want to isolate and tell you when the lights in that area have gone out. Then you can mark the appropriate circuit breaker. If you don't have anyone to help you and you need to do it, you could plug in a radio in the area that you want to isolate and turn it on very loudly that you can hear it at the service panel. And when it goes off, you'll know that the electricity in that area is not working. Otherwise, you have to do a lot of running back and forth. Here are some danger signals that indicate you should call an electrician. If there's rust in the electrical panel, discoloration, overheating, flickering lights, or circuit breakers that keep tripping with no apparent reason. Remember that electricity is not a hobby and it can be very dangerous. The Electrical Safety Foundation says that over 400 people get electrocuted in their own home or backyard every year. So be very careful. This is just some basic household information. If you have any questions or concerns, contact your local electrician. And make sure you check out our website, momprepares.com, where we help smart moms be prepared for anything. And please subscribe to this channel before you leave. Thanks for watching. Most homes these days have circus breakers. Circus breakers. <laughs>